it, it's really you've got a cylinder that is clamped between two plates, almost like this sort of vice grip where these bolts are clamping these two plates right here. And here's my cylinder that is pressed in between them. Okay, so we've got a 50 millimeter diameter cylinder. It's made from this magnesium, and let's uh, just give you the E from the back of the book or from property tables, or you'd have to Google it or something. Sorry, this is 44.7 hmm, times 10 to the 9 PA. 10 to the 9 PA, that, that's, that's a GPA, right? 10 to the 6 is MPA, 10 to the 9 is GPA. Don't mind, let me do GPA right here. 44.7 GPA. Um, and the, there's a temperature change, so the uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, 26 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree C. All right, so that is this pink uh, cylinder. That's the material that it's made from. It has a diameter of 50 millimeters. All right, so it's placed in the clamp when the temperature is 20 degrees C. Part A, let's see, part A. If, the, if these bolts, which are stainless steel, if the bolts of the clamp each have a diameter of 10 millimeters, and they hold the cylinder snug with negligible force against the rigid jaws. Determine the force in the cylinder when the temperature reaches 130 degrees C. Okay, forget about part B for, for now. All right, so it's placed in there. The temperature rises, and the cylinder wants to expand. But you know, also the bolts want to expand too. And I don't know if you can see this or think about this, but these bolts have to go all the way through the plates. These bolts are a little bit different length, size than the cylinder is. All right, so when you increase the temperature, the cylinder wants to expand, the bolts expand too. We'll see which one expands more. All right, and we're gonna find the, determine the force in the cylinder. So not the stress in the cylinder, just the force in the cylinder when the temperature rises to 130 degrees C. All right, I don't know if the statics is as obvious here to you as uh, it could be, but the, for this plate right here, for this plate right here, I've got the force of the cylinder pushing it right there. And then I've got the force in bolt two, force in bolt one, right there. Uh, if I sum the moments about the center, then I would get force in bolt one, is equal to the force in bolt two. You know, this is symmetric, do, either due to symmetry or due to some of the moments. And I think you probably would have just guessed it. The force in the bolts is the same. Let's call it FB. FB. Uh, but also from static, summing the forces in Y, F cylinder minus two of these bolts equals zero. So, so there's an equation right here that FB1 is equal to FB2, so I, I'll just replace it with FB. And the force in the cylinder minus two forces in the bolts equals, so maybe we'll write F cylinder equals two F bolts. I mean, that, some of that was kind of obvious, but that's all I could get from statics. So how about compatibility? How about compatibility? What is going to happen to these delta L's? First of all, this cylinder is going to want to expand more than the bolts. All right. 
the cylinder is going to want to expand more than the bolts. You can kind of see that right here. Oh, sorry. I need to give this these values to you. This for the, the bolts, the E is 193 GPA. The alpha is 17 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree C. So by looking at the alphas, the cylinder is going to want to expand more. But also, if the bolts expanded too much, the cylinder would, would no longer be touching the plate. I, I'm assuming that free body diagram uh, and the whole point of the problem is that the cylinder wants to expand more than the bolts. But how do they expand? How do they expand? They're going to expand by the same value. The delta L of the cylinder and the delta L of the bolt are going to expand the same. That's my delta. This plate is going to go up, you know, a millimeter, a fraction of a millimeter due to the rise in temperature. All right, so this is one of those where they expand the same. The delta L's are the same. All right, so I have two ways that they expand, FL over EA and alpha delta T L. I've got at FL over EA and alpha delta T L. All right, so the FL over EA of the cylinder, what is the internal force in the cylinder? F, I'm calling it F cylinder. And is it positive or negative? This is the plate. This is the plate, but, but what, is, what is the cylinder? It's pushing, it's pushing right here. Uh, it's in compression, right? If it's sandwiched between the two plates, if it's touching the two plates, it's in compression. It can't be in tension if it's just touching, if it's placed between the two plates. So this, let's be consistent. Let's compress, for, for these delta Ls, compression is negative, tension positive. All right, so I've got negative FCL. The length is 100 millimeters. The E for the cylinder, 44.7 GPA. 44.7 GPA. I'm about to do the area as well. What is the area? 50 millimeter diameter. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do 44,700 MPA. And then I'm going to do pi by 4, 50 squared. And that way, these three terms are going to be unitless. MPA, my force has got to be in newtons, and then millimeters squared. Okay. Should I change this one? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see what the other terms look like. Plus alpha delta T L. Alpha is 26 times 10 to the negative six per degree C. Delta T, it went from 20 degrees C to 130. 110 degrees C, and its length 100 millimeters. This is positive because, I mean, that delta T was positive. Delta T was positive. All right, so that's what I've got on the left-hand side. Then FL over EA for the bolts. What is the F in the bolts? FB. Is it positive or negative? Is it tension or compression? FB right here. I'm, I'm feeling like these bolts are keeping the plate together, right? These bolts are pulling. These bolts are in tension. These bolts are in tension. I drew it right here. These bolts are in tension, so whereas the force in the cylinder would be negative, this force in this bolt is going to be positive. 
FB. All right, the length of the bolt, look, kind of rethink this length. The bolt has to go through both plates. The bolt force, the length of the bolt is 150 millimeters. All right, and then it's E 193,000 MPA, and it's area pi by 4, 10 squared millimeters. Okay, uh, let me be careful here because sometimes I could think about both bolts or am I thinking about both bolts together or am I thinking about one bolt by itself? You could, you could do it either way. Just be consistent. That FB is for those bolts individually. And I said there are two of them. So that area needs to be for one bolt individually. And it's not like you add both of them, right? Let's, let's say this moves up by two millimeters. We don't add the two millimeter from one bolt and add the two millimeter from the other bolt and say that it went up by four. No, it only went up by two. You know, this is like, you know, things that are in parallel instead of things that are in series. All right, so that's FL over EA for the bolt right there, plus alpha delta T L. It's alpha. 17 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree C, 110, and its length, I ran out of room, 150 millimeters right there. One fifty millimeters right there. All right, and then I've got two equations. Here's one equation, and here's my other equation. I would plug two FB right in for there, and then I only have one unknown, FB. Solve for FB. And I'm looking at one bolt. The force in one bolt is 452 newtons. Plug that back in to find the force in the cylinder, 904. Newtons. And I think that is what I need to box in. What is the force in the cylinder? Right there. That was part A. I don't let's see if we'll do part B completely or just sort of um talk about it. All right, part B. Same setup. All right, but all that math that we did, we're not going to we're not going to reuse any of those numbers. Most of those equations, we'll we'll see how they change. Part B, the cylinder is placed at 15 degrees C. Determine the temperature at which the average normal stress in either the magnesium or the steel becomes 12 MPa. So, some of these most of the problems that I do in class, it's like. Here's the temperature, what is the force? What is the stress? All right, but part B is telling you, hey, here's the stress, what is the temperature? Um, don't try to do this completely backwards, but if, if I tell you the stress, I'm really telling you the force in the cylinder, let's say, okay? But another wrinkle to this problem is it didn't tell us that the stress in the magnesium was 12 MPa. That, that might be correct. All right. Or it didn't tell me, hey, the stress in the steel is 12 MPa. If it told me the stress in magnesium was 12 MPa, I would take that 12 MPa and I would convert it to force. And then I would know the force in the cylinder. And you see this long equation right here where I had – those two are my unknowns, and I knew delta T. In this case, you know, I would know for cylinder, and I would need to solve for delta T. So we're, we're substituting one unknown for another. Okay, but let's think about this. Problems like this. Cylinder is placed when temperature is 15. Determine the temperature when the normal stress in either the magnesium or the steel first becomes 12 MPa. You kind of need to test both. You kind of need to test both. So if you have somewhere that you can squeeze this in or write this for part B, if the cylinder reaches 12 MPa 
first. Then I know that stress is force over area. I would say 12 MPa of the cylinder equals force in the cylinder over pi by 4, uh, 50 squared. Uh, then the force in the cylinder would be 23.5 kilonewtons. And from statics, if the force in the cylinder is 23.5, the force in the bolt, 11.8. All right, so maybe that happens first. So if that's the case, then I could go to my long delta L problem, and I could go ahead and plug in the force of the cylinder, go ahead and plug in the force of the bolt, and find the delta T. Okay, or uh, the bolt reaches 12 MPa first. Force bolt over pi by 4, 10 squared, then the force in the bolt would be 0.943 kilonewtons force in the cylinder from statics, 1.89 kilonewtons. So which of those happens first? The bolt, right? The bolt gets up to a stress of 12 MPa first before because because once it got gets up to there if the bolt's 11.8 kilonewtons it's, it's way past you, you could calculate the stress it'd be way past 12 mpa okay so sometimes problems if you have two different materials where it says make sure none of them go past a stress of this or hey make sure none of them fail you know, maybe it tells you the failure stress for the bolt, tells you the failure stress for the cylinder. Test one of them out, see which one fails first. Okay, but if we know, if we know the bolt reaches 12 MPa, then we know the force in the bolt is 1.89 kilonewtons. Sorry, the force in the bolt is 0.943 kilonewtons and the force in the cylinder. So then we can take these two the FL over EA, FL over EA plus alpha delta TL, <coughs> FL over EA plus alpha delta TL, and now delta T is our only unknown. We know the force in the cylinder, length of the cylinder, we know, we know all of these, and we can solve for delta T. So there's two things about this problem I want to Two things about part B of this problem. Many times the problems I like to do, we, we're given the temperature change and, and we're, we're just solving for force. But I could give you the stress, which is telling you the force, and ask for the delta T. Okay. And then also for problems where you need to test out which one of the material gets to a certain stress first, Go ahead and set one to the stress and see what the other force or stress is. Or set the other one to the stress, see what the other one is. Compare them and see which one fails first or which one gets to that stress first. And then continue with the problem. Okay. All right. I don't know if I did a great job. See if you can get, I've got, let will give you the answer. 229 degrees C. 229 degrees C is the delta T. That did, doesn't even answer the question. The question really asks for the temperature. So the temperature, I guess, <clears throat> 244, right? If it started at 15 degrees C. Okay. All right. 